Hello, this is Matt from TracyMatt.co.uk and from Boxings.com, and here I have the ZT Racer, also known elsewhere as the ZTE Link, and this one is obviously a three-branded version of the handset. Uh, Going to do a quick unboxing video for you, and uh, we'll take a look what's inside and uh, take a little bit of a tour around the handset. Um, immediately on top should be the user manual. I know that's actually missing from my PR sample, um, but the user manual would normally be on top. Inside the handset itself sits so just there. We're going to come back to that in a second. And in terms of the other accessories, uh, bearing in mind again, this is a PR model, so it has been previously opened um, probably by another reviewer. Uh, we have a standard USB to micro USB sync charge cable. Uh, some bags that have already been opened. Presumably one of them would have contained um, the battery. Uh, we have a wired headset. So that has a four pole, three and a half mil jack on one end, uh, a length of cable, an inline microphone with a push button, just a simple affair. And then headphones themselves, which are pretty small and uh, sort of in-ear style. Uh, they're okay, I've seen worse, uh, they look reasonably good quality, what they sound like obviously don't know at this point, but we'll comment on that later. And then finally we have the charger, which is just a standard UK 3 pin plug, and a length of cable with a micro USB style connector on there for charging up. Uh, I like the fact that this is completely separate to the sync charge cable, we don't have to plug that into a USB uh, wall socket so it's completely separate so you can use one plug into your PC and one plugs into the wall that's quite good so let's take a look at the racer itself oh, let's just wipe the screen off uh, so first and foremost on the front uh, we have a 2.8 inch touchscreen display which is uh, 240 by 320 pixels below that series of uh, sort of uh, touch sensitive uh, buttons if you like yeah, they're not physical buttons but they are touch sensitive so we have the home menu and back button and then physical buttons underneath that, which are the phone keys, so answer and hang up keys, just on either side as a physical button arrangement. Nothing to see down the left hand side, it's quite clean, and it's a little retro in terms of the design in my opinion. And I have seen uh, this sort of style of design uh, going back a couple of years really, there's nothing fantastic about the design, it's fairly clean and simple. Nothing to be seen on the bottom, apart from a hole for the microphone. And on the right hand side we have an up and down volume control rocker which is a bit of an unusual shape and then a micro USB connector above that. On the top 3.5mm headphone socket for plugging in the wired headset or indeed your own headphones and a power button and then finally uh, I think that's an eyelet for a phone charm or a lanyard. On the back a 32 megapixel autofocus camera doesn't have a flash though and obviously the uh, 3 and the Android logos on the back which quite cool. Uh, back cover pops off like so which reveals the battery which pops out and the SIM card. Do need to remove the battery in order to get access to the SIM card which is pretty standard um, but you do also have to remove the battery in order to get to the micro SD card socket which uh, is just underneath there. Let's pop that back in. So that's a bit of a um, pity in some respects that you have to remove the back cover in order to get access to the battery. Um, but that's uh, what we have to do. That cover then just snaps back on and uh, let's just see if we can power up. As you can see there's a little indicator LED underneath the loudspeaker on the front and uh, obviously the Android logo. While that starts up let me just run down spec. As I say 2.8 inch touch screen which is 240 by 320 pixels. One thing to be cautious of is with Android Market, not all of the an apps and games on Android Market will work with a 240 by 320 touchscreen, which is a slightly smaller touchscreen than sort of uh, the average Android. So be just bear that in mind. And while that's just starting up and mounting the SD card, lights flashing there, presumably because it's trying to get a network. It does say that the battery is fully charged, so it's not about that. It has a 600 megahertz processor, which isn't bad for a handset of its uh, size. And well, this is uh, available here in the UK for about 99 pounds, uh, SIM free, and well, probably from free um, on the three network. Um, so that's uh, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty much a bargain. In terms of size, 102 millimeters from top to bottom, 55 millimeters wide, and just over 14 millimeters thick. It's pretty lightweight though, it's 120 grams and it does feel quite light. The design does lead it to actually feel quite lightweight 
and uh, easy to hold, so it's pretty decent. It's Android 2.1, so it's kind of similar in terms of size and overall specification. It's fairly similar to the Vodafone 845 that we saw um, last week and that we're working on a review of at the moment. 128 meg of ROM, 256 meg of RAM, does have built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 2 and also GPS. And it's quad band for GSM and tri band for HSDPA, so that's uh, it's pretty cool. It will work in most countries. Um, pushing the button at the top takes it out of power save mode and we just unlock and it does seem to be no it's a resistive touch screen um, which will some people will not like it's a bit of a strange design to the home screen there initially but we've got a video recorder there three favorites planet three messages contacts dialer and android market pushing the button at the bottom obviously brings up the main menu with all the icons and all the installed applications which we can Try that again, which we can scroll through like so, and touch screen is a little bit fussy, so I have to be a little bit careful with that. Uh, just takes a little bit of getting used to, I guess. Uh, we have things in here like Skype on three, sound recorder, Google Talk, messages and gallery, Android markets. I've already mentioned the browser, documents to go, and some other bits and pieces. If we go back home. And let's take a look at in the main main menu and go to settings, wireless and networks, turn the Wi-Fi on. And we'll go into Wi-Fi settings and we'll add a connection. And we have a pretty standard looking Android keyboard underneath, so we're just gonna go ahead and type in key. And while that connects. Obtain, obtaining an address. So we have eventually connected. I'll probably cut out the last two minutes of the video because it has taken about two minutes before we got a connection. I uh, don't know why that is, but we are now connected anyway. So let's just go back home and go into here. We have take a look at the browser. Okay, connects over Wi Fi. We certainly are. But we were going to go to ocmat.co.uk and let's see how quickly that loads. That is pretty quick. Obviously, I am working over Wi Fi and a broadband connection, but it's working quite quickly, rendering quite quickly. And the page is loaded. Colours look quite good on the screen in terms of the reproduction. And let's see if we can go ahead. Scroll around. Obviously we can zoom out. And zoom right out so we've got the full screen. There, which takes obviously a few steps to do. So that is the full page or full page width. With that type of display, as I say, it is quarter VGA 240 by 320 pixels. Um, you're not really going to be able to read anything at that sort of resolution. Um, and if we rotate, we do have an accelerometer that will rotate it around that way, like so. And that rotates pretty quickly. There's very little lag in the rotation from the accelerometer. That's pretty good. Uh, but obviously, we can zoom back in. Oops, we can zoom back in and read our articles uh, but the zoom isn't very fast it kind of redraw is uh, is not brilliant um, but it does the job the browser itself isn't bad it's a fairly far it's fairly fast in that you can scroll around and it loads fairly quickly renders fairly quickly so it's fairly decent if we come back out here and go back into the settings or into the menu rather and look at Google Maps quickly fire into Google Maps okay uh, let's see if this picks up our position. Okay, please enable. Let's come back out of here. Go home, menu, settings, and location and security. Use GPS and you use assisted GPS home so obviously that's not enabled by default go back into Google Maps and take a quick look 
so it was coming up. In interestingly, the buttons at the bottom are also um, of a resistive nature, so they do require a bit of pressure to actually use. So we go to my location. It's taken a while to actually come up. You can see that it's polling at the top there. There we go, that's worked quite well. It's picked up my location. Uh, it's working just fine actually. So we go back home. Pull down the top, we can actually see that we've got a couple of uh, notifications. So one is that the SD card is mounted and that uh, Skype uh, requires an update. So we'll just clear that and that's what the flashing notification at the top was, was actually that the alerts there um, were notifying me. Got a Google search at the top there, doesn't have the audio version or voice search and we do have additional screens but only three um, in total. So we have here the power control so we can turn the wireless on and off, Bluetooth on and off, flight mode, sync and the backlight controls so we can make the backlight even brighter which is quite good. Then we have uh, Maps, Google Mail, Google Talk and YouTube. Come back to YouTube in just a moment. And then on the other side we have the gallery and the browser. Pushing the home button takes us right back to the center. Let's go and take a quick look at YouTube. Now we go ahead and search. And we'll use the OD, which is my YouTube channel alias if you like. So let's do the OD unboxing as a search. As you can see there's some of my YouTube videos listed. Uh, let's put the Blackberry Storm there. Loading video, let's see how long that takes to actually come up. Oh, that is pretty quick, much quicker than some of the other devices that we've reviewed recently, so that's pretty good. That's also down to the speed of the wireless connection I have. Okay, well, we get the idea, so that's not bad. And let's take a quick look, see if there's anything else in here that we want to have a look at. I think most of this is pretty standard stuff. I have a thing for videos here. Oh, there's some videos that have already been on, left on there by uh, a previous a reviewer, possibly. So perhaps we better not look at those in case they're rude. Uh, FM radio, which does require the use of the headset. So we'll come back out of there. Music and messages gallery. There's a few already few photos already on there again. I won't go into them just in case there's somebody else's. We'll clear that off before we do the full review. Uh, camera, calendar. I think most of this stuff is fairly well standard. We'll just come back to the home screen and push the dial button so we can see the dialer. Again, it is pretty straightforward and standard in terms of the controls there. Um, touch screen, as I say, is resistive and does require a little bit of pressure to make it work. Um, but once you get used to it, it's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. So, let's come back out of there, go back home. That's the main screen. Obviously this can all be customised, so if we do a long press there we can add widgets. And there are a series of widgets that we can add. Not too many in actual fact, but it doesn't have some of the uh, funkier uh, widgets if you like. So um, it's fairly basic, but we can add any of the icons that we can add here. We can add any, any application can be added as a, as a shortcut or an icon on the home screen. And we do have three home screens that we can actually concern ourselves with setting up, so that's pretty good. So this has been the ZTE Racer or ZTE Link. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. I'll be using it as a, sort of a day-to-day -day phone and I'll let you know how I've been getting on with it in the full review. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash Tracy and Matt. And I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with Unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.